Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we initialized the required properties to add a new product using this product model. Now we have to make sure that we add the logic inside the HTML component so that we can validate whatever input is being entered by user. So we have the validation properties that have been initialized. But we have not yet added the validation code in the HTML for the input tags. So if I'm adding anything, as you see, the reactive components are not verifying if the input is valid or invalid. That's because we have not yet added the logic inside the HTML component. And to do that, we'll go to our application and the HTML component, which is the product list .component .html, and go directly to the template, which contains the form to add a new product. So here inside the template, we have this button, which is basically used to close the model. But we don't want to close the model. So when the close button is clicked, we want to just hide the model. So what we want to do is we will add a click event here. And using the model ref object that we have, what we want to do is call the hide method. By doing this, when the model the X on the button is clicked, the X icon on this button is clicked, the model will hide itself. So one thing that we needed, we have added that. Now let's move on further. And the next thing that we want to do is we have this model body text where we have a paragraph. And here we want to display this model message which says all fields are mandatory. So for that, what we want to do we want to add the curly braces and call the model message property over here. So the value will be displayed when the model is loaded. I save, I go back, try to load the model. All fields are mandatory, it's being display, displayed now. So if you want, you can change the value of the message over here in this object and it was going to change on the model as well. Let's go further. Now, when the form is submitted we need to fire off a method so let's call this method as on submit using the ng submit attribute submit we will call the on submit method now the on submit method we have not yet created it we will create it when we finish adding all the required properties inside this form. So let's do that first. Now, inside the form, when we, inside the UL tag, which contains all the input tags inside the Lee tags, which is the list tags. Now let's go ahead and add our validation to each of these inputs. Now here, we have an error message that is being displayed. So, we will add a condition here to display this error message because now if you see when I load this model error messages are being displayed by default they are not validating if there is a value entered so if I entered a value it's not validating that value has already been entered and it should not be showing this error message unless the characters are more than 50 so for that go back here and here for the error message, first thing that we want to do is we want to set an ngif in the ngif attribute. What we want to what we want to do is we will set a condition if the name the id name input tag. So the name if it's touch that means somebody is has touched the input tag and the second condition we want to verify if it contains any errors. So if it is touched and if it contains any errors, then only we will set these values. Now what we want to do inside this pan tag. So when we want to show this product name is required only when the name field is left blank. So if a user does not enter something here, directly goes to the second input tag. So we will display a product name is required. 
if he enters something here which is more than 50 then we will display only 50 characters required so we don't want to display product name is required because already they have entered the product name but we what we are verifying here is that only 50 characters is allowed so let's go ahead and add the ng if condition for that so ng if what we want to test if name dot has error we will call this method if name property has the error the error is validated dot required so required if it has the error required which means if it's blank then display this message and for the next uh, property here message we'll set the condition if it has the error max length okay so look at this oh there's a quotation missing there now it should be fixed so only if it has these two errors then only it's going to display both the message if it has either one of the errors it's going to show that specific message inside the modal pop-up when you are trying to add so see now the errors have been disappeared go to the second one and it says it is required when i do this it doesn't give me error but when i add more than 50 characters inside the name it will give me only 50 characters are allowed so it is reactive component reactive.js that is acting in the form modules that's re reacting based on the input that is added so now let's go back and add the conditions for the remaining properties that we have in order to speed up the process i will add these conditions first so that i save time on the typing so guys i have added all the required validations on the messages that are being displayed under the input tags so if you see for description i'm checking if it's touched and if it has errors then it will check if the error is related to required then it will display the message based on the required error if it's related to max length it will display the error based on the max length of the characters for description for the checkbox, we don't have any validations because by default out of stock will be checked and now for the other option which is the price i have added the required validator plus the minimum and max validator to check the, the condition finally for the image url we have no required validator but we have a pattern validator therefore we are checking if the image.url has the error related to pattern then display the message invalid image.url finally for the submit button we will set the value of the submit button to disable that's because uh, if the form has any errors we cannot submit the form so if it has errors which means that the form is invalid so we are checking if the insert form that's the id of our form if it's invalid then this button should be disabled and if all the errors are zero which means there are no errors then the form button should be available to be clicked let's save this go back to our application click on add product and now we don't have any errors we all we have is some values that we can use as you see it's popping up with all the required reactive components in our form and the image url once again you would have to use an https url here in order for it to work so everything will looks fine we have no errors and the image uh, also will work fine with an https uh, url when we add an https url we would be able to see that we have no errors but now what we want to do is when this add button is clicked we need to make sure that we go and add the product in the database and when the add button is clicked we we are calling the on add on submit method if you go to your application we will see that when we are clicking the add button when you're submitting this form we are calling the on submit method so let's go ahead and create this method so go to our product list dot component dot ts and then let's create a method just below the on add product model method we will create an on submit method and this method will be used to add a new product so when the add button is clicked this method will be called now let's go ahead and quickly add the logic to add the new product to add a new product we are going to call the 
method insert new product from our product service and we have already instantiated an object of type product service in the constructor so using that object we will call the insert product method so let's go ahead and write the logic here so i'm going to copy paste the code and let's explain this code to you first i have created an object called as new product this object will hold all the property values that we are receiving from the insert form so when the add button is clicked all the values from the insert form will be passed on to this object here and the way we can access all the values is by calling the form name dot form id dot the value property so now this new product holds all the values that are present inside the form next using the product service object that we instantiated we will call the insert product method and our insert product method requires us to pass the details of the new product and this method what it does it calls the api from the controller product controller and it returns a new product observable product so it adds the product and returns a new observable type of product so when i go back to the product list.component.ts i'm calling the insert product dot insert product method and i'm passing the details of the new product which are stored in this new product object then i'm subscribing to the result because it, the method is returning an observable type of result so if i have to subscribe to it now when i'm subscribing when the response is a success when i'm trying to add the product when the response is a success what i'm doing is first thing i'm going to do is clear the cache using the calling the clear cache method what why do i need to clear the cache because when i'm loading the list of the products i would not see it, the new products as you all know we are loading this list from the cache browser cache so we are not making 10 calls to the server we have just made one call to the server which will load all the products and every time whenever we want to view the products all we do is we load it from the cache so now the cache will not have the new values the new product that we added the cache will not have that values therefore to get that new value first we have to delete the old cache and then reload the product list therefore what I'm doing here is first clearing the cache and then the product observable object that we created over here inside that product observable object I'm setting the values received by the call get products so get products does it it gets all the products now what I'm doing is I'm subscribing to this observable object and then the new list of products I am setting the value of that new list to this products array that we have so we all know when we created the data tables that the list inside the data tables is loaded from the products array object therefore we have to make sure that we the product array is value is set to the new value that we have received now finally what we are going to do is after the product has been added and we click the add button this model needs to be hidden so if this remains on the screen we would not see what's going on in the background so this needs to hide so that the new list which is loaded we can see it therefore we will hide the model by calling the hide metal method on the model ref finally what we want to do is we want to then after when we hide the form model we also want to make sure that we reset the form inside this model so let's say i'm hiding this model like this and when i try to again load the model it will have the old model values all property values that i added so i want to make sure that these values are reset and the form is like blank how it was initially so i'm also making sure that the form is reset now after everything is fine what i'm doing is i'm reloading the data table and to reload the data table as we all know we have to use the trigger and call the next method so dt trigger object that we created we are going to use that dt trigger and then we are going to load our data table again and the data table when it loads it will get it will get its values from the products products array all the values that are stored in the product array it will load it inside the table now we will also print on the console that the 
new product is added and if there is an error we will say that we could not add the product for now we are just handling the product errors like this but at the end of the video tutorial series i will show you how you can add custom error handlers to your methods inside your project but for now just we are printing it on the console saying that the product could not be added okay now the method has been added now whenever we want to add a new product we can go ahead and add a new product but there is a problem the problem is i am logged in as a customer i am not an admin we all know that this button we need to fix it because it needs to be only seen by the admin and i'm not an admin and if i'm not an admin if i go to the product controller the asp.net core application we have set a policy which says required administrator role only required administrator role only for add and updating the products to delete the product as well so if now if i'm not an ad admin i cannot add a new product so let's go ahead and test this what response we get from the server so i'm trying to add a product macbook air 2019 describe something price is four four something like that and for the image i'll use this image from the internet it's an https link now what i'm going to do i'm going to click on the add button and look at the console what response i'm getting so i'm getting a 403 forbidden which is obvious because i'm a customer i cannot add a product i need to be an admin so far we have not created an user who has the admin role so for now we cannot tell if the product is being added for that we need to create a user with an admin role so how do we test this now so that's not a problem so for the testing purposes what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to azure data studio and let's log into my server which is localhost and username actually i have it here so i can just add this and put my password let's connect so connected now let's go to the tables uh, asp.net users and let's edit the data so uh look at the user and the user is my id is starting with 367 ac something like that so i'll go to the user roles right click edit on this so user role for that particular user id is two now let's go to this asp.net roles edit the data here and user with the id2 role is a customer whose id is one it's an admin so what i'm going to do i'm going to change that user's id tech howdy to one and then hit run to execute the query query was executed now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to click this add button and see if i'm able to add a new product so i need to refresh this guys so let's refresh this for now and now let's go and log out because for now in this browser's local storage i'm stored as a customer let me log in again take out the test underscore one submit so if you see now it's saying i'm an admin i'm not a customer because my id is changed now let's try to go to products add a new product let's add the values so the new product details have been added inside the form and now i'm just going to click the add button so as a administrator i would be able to add a new product and as you see new product is added and i get a response from the server for the successful call of the api now there's another problem that we have to address which is the data tables warning where when the new product is uh, added to the product list the data table is not loading so it's not detecting the changes that took place so if a new product is added the data table should be able to detect these changes and reload the list of uh, products that we have but that's not happening so therefore we have to fix this in the next video tutorial i will show you how you can reload the data tables and make the data tables detect the changes that took place in the application 
So for now, please like and subscribe this channel Tech Howdy. If you have any questions, use the comment section. And once again, you can find the updated code in the DevOps repos. Thank you.